Frank. Frank, you hear us? Yes. How are you? It's PK. Oh, yes, I do hear you. <laughs> Love the hat. Who's this? <laughs> this is PK. How are you? Oh, PK, how you doing? We Look, uh, I dressed up a little bit for you. Someone <laughs> had told me that uh, I was a little bit of a cowboy for doing this case, so uh, I thought I would, I would wear the appropriate attire for that. Well, you've got an esteemed panel here, uh, Craig, everybody's on the panel, and, and we're ready to go see what you got for us. Okay, well, actually what we're doing here, this is actually a research patient that we're doing, uh, and I'm going to go through several things, and then we'll talk about, uh, talk about the catheter that we'll be using, which is the OPC catheter. But uh, this is a 62-year-old gentleman who actually works in, the, in New Orleans, and while he was walking to work, he began noticing progressive claudication, and he had uh, actually progressed on to Rutherford three. He's a smoker, not a diabetic, has high cholesterol and high blood pressure. So uh, got, we got it, brought him in. AVIs were uh, significantly diminished on the left side and normal on the right, surprisingly. So we brought him in and, and performed this angiogram right here. Mm -hmm. All right, as you see, he's actually got relatively reasonable vessels. He's got a very short total occlusion right at the level of Hunter's Canal as you're entering it. And then he comes through, he's got uh, a pretty reasonable popliteal artery and it uh, looks like his posterior tibial's occluded. He's got two vessel runoff to his foot. Does everyone see that okay? Yeah, we see it fine. Okay, so after looking at this, uh, we were actually involved in a trial called the Copper Trial, which is, uh, is using an uh, occlusion perfusion catheter, which is developed by Advanced Catheter Therapies, and for delivery of any kind of substance you'd like to deliver, and we've been using it to deliver Paxitaxel. Uh, this is actually the fourth in man uh, study that's been done right here, a fourth in man case that's been done. And uh, so what I did is I took a catheter down here, localized, was hoping I'd find a track, and we got, we got through relatively easy without a, a lot of difficulty here. Uh, we cross this using an aqua tempo catheter, which is a vertebral catheter that I prefer for, to be able to steer in a hydrophilic wire, and it went across relatively easy, and we passed a uh, filter down past this. And the reason I put a filter down, I wanted to debulk this the best I could. And so what we did is I took a silver hog now and made several passes. And so we got quite a bit of plaque out and I would like to show you the plaque over here. Where is, uh, where's the, where's those tweezers? Would you steal my tweezers? Come on, man. All right, can you see this right here? Yeah, we see it. So we got we got quite a bit of uh, this is called this is called a this is called a mobile anthrectomy. When you do a mobile anthrectomy, you get as much out as you possibly can. And uh, as you can see, we got some pretty good plaque here. We see can it you clearly. See that? Yeah, we do. Okay, excellent. Frank, were, were you surprised? Uh, interesting. At, were you surprised at how good the auto, the other arteries looked with this focal occlusion? And were you thinking about anything else? Well, I was kind of surprised at the way the rest of the vessels look. And uh, as far as focal occlusion, you know, you can get that. He's a smoker and he has, has a significant blood pressure and hyper and hypercholesterolemia that's been untreated. You would think that the rest of the vessels are much worse. I'm sure if we put an Ivis catheter down there, we would have found quite a bit of plaque burden up and down the vessel by itself. It's just that our lumogram here is not showing it. Okay, so we, we took this catheter here, and after we debulked him and passed the silver hawk a couple of times, 
Interesting, here's our angiogram post. Now some of that could be could be competitive flow from from the uh, from his collaterals there, although I don't believe all of it is. So I went ahead and decided I would balloon it. And you know, I'm so quick with my balloons, I just go up and down. So, you know, actually we've been up for eight minutes and 30 seconds. <laughs> and I think we should get a nice long inflation here. And, and so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna let this down, take a picture and see how it looks. If we get very good results, what we plan on doing after that is taking our uh, our OPC catheter and delivering Paxitaxel to this area with a two minute dwell time. Uh, I will be giving a lecture on this catheter come Friday, but I'll go through and explain it to you. But let's see if we're gonna be able to use it first. Does anyone have any questions? Got another quad panel. <laughs> no, no, but but Frank, I was wondering, why did you choose to atherectomize this rather than primary balloon it? <laughs> because if I'm going to deliver drug, I want to debulk as much as I can and able to be able to deliver the drug to the native walls of the vessel. So, so can you explain? Uh, you're basically uh, is the drug going to be directly delivered as paclitaxel, or is it in a in some sort of solvent, or how does it go? It's in a medium. It's in a medium mixed with uh, it's paclitaxel, saline, and dye. No. Dr. Vermani, um, any thoughts on on the hydrophobic nature of paclitaxel, and what are the chances uh, how this is going to work here? It depends whether it stays there or not, and I doubt, because it's amorphous, I doubt that it'll stay there. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I don't expect long-term good results. Right. Just like we, in a way, when we get with drug-coated balloons, is right. the paclitaxel is crystalline, and so it tends to stay at the site where it's delivered. So Frank, I don't know if you heard that. I don't know if you were able to hear that. It was just a question about no, the amorphous paclitaxel. I did, and I disagree with her because we have rabbit studies that clearly show it in the uh, in the media with fluorescent paxitaxel after we've delivered it with this catheter. So uh, I know for a fact that this dye, we actually compared it to drug carbon bloom. Oh. So we got, we got, actually, not too bad. And, uh, and so we have rabbit studies and rabbit arteries that actually show that, that yes, it does stay. We've, Done for 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 us. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. using fluorescent paxitaxel and then and taking the vessels and and uh, studying them afterwards, we found that yes, the paxitaxel is in the media, is in the media of the vessel. Mm -hmm. So 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 what, it actually elutes out of the balloon into the vessel, and and uh, and how long do you leave the balloon up? But we actually pressurize it. We leave it up for two minutes. I see. So there are occlusive think, balloons. I don't know that, if that's a flow. Yeah, there are occlusive balloons at either end. The drug is given and allowed to dwell, and then there's a balloon inside of that chamber, which, when inflated, pressurizes that area. But it's kept in between the two balloons. I'm going to take a closer picture of that because I think I think we'll be ready to do something if. Uh, if it looks like that's just competitive flow. So Frank, I'm just curious, what do you think are the potential advantages of this type of paclitaxel delivery versus uh, the currently commercially available uh, methods of delivering paclitaxel to the vessel wall? How much are you paying for a balloon? Well, that's a good question, yep. yep. Over $1,000. And I can use this catheter all the way up. I did a 300 length lesion the other day. So you're saying one catheter? Oh, because of the occlusive nature of the catheter. I got it. Yeah, I think what. Let me get behind my. And, uh, do you have a uh, tube?
Well, I'm just wondering um, any other opinions from the panel on it. Here. I'm just going to ask the panel, Frank, while you're working, George, uh, Dr. Schwartz, okay. any thoughts on, on this type of approach using paclitaxel? Can't hear you, George. Can't hear you. No, there's something no, there. Here. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about the the technique, and I'm a little worried about that haziness there, okay. about whether that's going to be a persistent problem, and you're going to end up having to use some sort of stent or scaffold in the end, anyways. Uh, if memory serves, I think uh, the original Thunder trial was three arms, was it not? Yes, it was. Uh, one of the arms was uh, this approach. Mm -hmm. uh, the results were the same as angioplasty in that arm, so clearly a different approach uh, needs to be taken. So, Frank, that's a good question about the original Thunder trial, um, kind of the similar approach of putting it into dye and, and, and in a solution. But what do you think of the differences between this approach and in the, in the Thunder trial to, uh, that make it a little bit different and maybe the effect of paclitaxel will be more pronounced? I think if you understood the catheter a little better that uh, you, would, you would actually understand a little bit. I'm going to show you the catheter and we'll talk about it. I'm probably going to go ahead and treat this and see what happens with it. I think it should be okay. It is hazy. But uh, once you deliver the Pax tax, so we'll just allow for healing. Let's, let's show this catheter here. Can, can you see this catheter? No, not now. Let me get it all laid up here. Now, can, can you see this right here? Yep, we see it now, Frank. Okay, what you, what you have is you have occlusion blown on each end. You've got a, a which, are, which are atraumatic blowns. In the, in the center portion of this, you have a pressure balloon that really doesn't even touch the walls. And what it does is it actually helps in, in, in displacing fluid in the chamber and also increasing pressure to deliver the fluid, to, to deliver the drug into the walls of the vessel. You monitor by this particular device right here, and what we do is we keep we keep a certain pressure, PSI, and it, as long as it's below two atmospheres, we're fine, but it will be consistent, and we deliver drug till we get a consistent PSI, and we maintain that for two minutes. And once we maintain that for two minutes, this is where we saw in the animal studies that it was delivered into the walls of the vessel. Mm. Now, we clearly see it now. So we see the idea. it's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Clearly. Okay? Yep. All right. So we, I mean, I'm going to take, uh, oh, you know, you know, all these days of oculistenotic reflex that we have, sometimes you want something perfect. So what I think we'll do is I'm going to go ahead and treat this with a drug, and we're going to see how it's going. Is there Has anybody got any other ideas? I mean, my only question is that haziness. I mean, are you worried that that may be a dissection flap or anything like that? Or, um, and that's one. I can always come back. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm not burning any bridges here, guys. And ladies. <laughs> and any thoughts on that right. br on that branch, Frank? What you think that branch? Uh, the, Dr. Schwartz brings up a good point about the branch. Whether you think there'll be some washout? The medium that we, uh, did you zero this? Okay. Okay, there. The, the medium that we put this in is, it helps, but you, that's also by maintaining the pressure, by monitoring it with this device here and maintaining the pressure, we're able, we're able to continue to deliver drug at a consistent pressure, even if you have some bleed off from, from collaterals or branch vessels that are present. So, so Frank, we're going to watch you put up this balloon, and while you're delivering the drug, we're probably going to cut out to Tom Davis in Detroit and then come back to you. That would be a good idea. So, so we're just going to watch the balloon go up as you explain it. To make sure you get the drug label over there. You get that. So, so what's the dose of paclitaxel that you use here, Frank? Uh, the mixture, the mixture.
mixture, and actually it's, it's much less than what's on drug balloons it'd be. But uh, the mixture is 20 milligrams of Paxitaxel, or 20 cc's of Paxitaxel, 10 cc's of dye, and 20 cc's of saline. So, it's, you got that? And watch, watch, watch distally, okay? What's the concentration? And, and the concentration? I'm gonna have to go look at the numbers, guys. I ain't thought about it in a while. <laughs> No, it's a very interesting thing. It really, it really looks like it's, uh, it's definitely interesting. So once you put up the balloon, we'll cut out. And this is the first generation of this, so, mm -hmm. so it's going to be okay. Give me, you got that? All right, hand me. Okay. So it's one deflator is going to inflate both the occlusion balloons? No, like I said, this is uh, this is early on in early on in this device, so uh, we got several inflators we're sticking on in. Gotcha. Okay, what's this? Drug? So it's a little cumbersome to come forward, come near you. All right, so what we do, so we take this up to about two atmospheres. And you have your two occlusion balloons, as you can see. Okay? Yep, we see it. All right, and then I will open up you got an ingress and egress port. And so I'll open up the egress port and then I'm going to take up the center balloon. And, and what, what which is a non treating balloon. What, what prevents the solution from escaping into the collaterals, uh, into the systemic circulation of the patient? We, we, we continue a continuous pressure and deliver it. Now, it will, you will get a little bit of drug, but this is such a minute quantity of drug, it, it, it doesn't make that much difference. Mm -hmm. yep. So we'll start delivering the drug here. Okay. Yep, we see all the balloons are up. So right now, yes. are you delivering the drug yet or no? So you see the drug entering? I'll take this down now, which is the middle, and then I'll continue delivering the drug. Yep. With it open on the back side here. And see, so you are getting some right. escape of the drug there. Well, we see it very clearly. I think, I think while you leave this up, how long do you generally leave this up for now? Two minutes after we get, make sure that the chamber is full. Okay, so I think if they're ready in Detroit, we're going to let you go ahead and, okay. and finish up, and we'll come back to you. We'll continue treating you. We'll see you soon. All right, thank you. Hi, Tom. How are you? Welcome to NCVH. Good. It, it's